Creating your own personal AI art is everywhere to see these days, and that's for a good reason. Who wouldn't want to see a bot recreating your face in anything imaginable? AI art is the most powerful tool for allowing users to create things that they otherwise don't have the skills to be able to make. Hi, it's me, Flo, and today we are going to do a step-by-step -step guide on how to use the Midjourney AI, as well as some tips and tricks so you can create the best-looking AI photos that has ever existed. Kind of. <laughs> All right, so to get started with Midjourney, you have to visit the website, which is midjourney.com and choose to join the beta version. This will take you to their Discord server. And for those who don't know what Discord is, it is kind of like, it's like a social platform and it's pretty popular among the gaming community. But it's also starting to evolve into like a forum used by schools and businesses as well. At first glance, Discord might look a little bit overwhelming, but trust me, once you get into it, you'll be fine. On the left side, you'll see that there are all of the categories where you can explore the community. But since we're just going to create some personal art that won't be shared with anyone, we are going to directly message the Midjourney bot. And Midjourney gives you 25 images per month for free, but it racks up pretty quickly. So you're most likely end up extending your limits. So to generate more pictures, you will have to subscribe and support their community by donating, I think it was like 10 bucks a month. Uh, and to do that, you have to type in slash subscribe to be taken to the subscription page. Before we do anything, let's take a look at our settings. So type in slash setting. From here, you can see your default settings. It is recommended that you are using the version four, but if you want to explore anime, you can switch to Niji mode or access that through keywording. To initiate a conversation with the bot, just type in slash and from here, you can see the most frequently used commands. For AI images, we are going to use slash imagine and then give it a prompt. If you give it something general, the AI will have the full creative freedom to create whatever it would like. So it might be not something you are looking for. So getting specific about details is essential when working with the Midjourney bot. It typically takes a minute for it to generate four variations. If you got the desired image, then you can click on the photo number in the Euro, which stands for upscaling the photo. If you like the idea, but it's not quite happy with the result, you can generate four more variation of the corresponding grid result by clicking on the photo number in the Vero, which stands for variations. If you didn't like any of the photos and want to use the same commands, uh, this button rerolls whatever command started the job. Now, since we are going to use a photo of ourselves as a reference, we need a link to that photo. And a way to do that is to send the photo to the chatbot and then copy the link. And I also like to open an extra tab and have the photo there like so I can easily access it whenever I need it. <laughs> so how do we write prompts? When writing prompts, there are three things you should keep in mind. And the first one being your physical description of an object, like a person, animal, setting, anything you can touch. For example, I'm going to say portrait photography, a woman sitting, bright eyes, flowers, etc. And second, the type of stylistic influence you would like to have. This could be an art medium, a art movement, an aesthetic, a vibe, or even colors. So let's just say soft light, pastel colors, and fashion pose. And third, parameters such as aspect ratio. This is how you instruct the bot to handle your image on a technical level. And the aspect one by one is by default. So let's say you want to have a vertical image like a portrait. You can type in dash AR two by three, and you can say like dash NO for no and yellow color, which stands for no yellow color and then you can say 8k and dash v4 which is the latest version version 4. you don't need to use all three but the bob will fill in every unspecified detail with its own biases the more you can give the better image you will end up having it's truly limitless what you can do with this <laughs> Let's talk tips and tricks. And we are going to start off by aspect ratio. So 16 by nine is going to give you the best image composition for wider photos, but this is only available for V3. I know it sucks. The only option you have there is three by two, which is 
doable, not perfect. Hopefully, we'll get there someday. For portrait photography, I mean photos, two by three is the best option for that. And this is because ratios force the bot's composition generation into a certain niche. If you are looking for a portrait that is going to be realistic, I would highly recommend that you are using the aspect ratio in every command because this is going to be easier for the bot to recognize that this is going to be a real looking photo. <laughs> to use the aspect ratio, you have to type in dash AR followed by the desired uh, ratio. Photorealism is achieved by including words like portrait or photography followed by the photographer style or the photographer itself. You can also use the type of depth to get even closer to your ideas, like you can say stable diffusion, or you can be as specific as saying 35 millimeter analog. I would also avoid style phrases like hyperrealistic, hyperrealism, realism, photorealistic, because the bot is trying to find images that mimic photos. Use negative keywords to instruct the bot what not to do. To use this feature, you can type in dash NO followed by the negative keyword. This is a great strategy if you happen to run into the issue of accidentally getting an extra arm. Yeah, happened a few times. <laughs> My next tip is to blend multiple picture to create exactly your vision. So if you type in girl in New York City, the bot will have the freedom to choose whatever it wants by association of New York. But if you add a photo of New York City and it will use that photo as a reference and create an image closer to that vision. However, if you include only photos of people, it will merge all of those photos together as one person. So the family portrait that you are looking for, well, it will be all of you together as one person. If you just want to have fun and see yourself in different scenarios, I would recommend trying out these keywords from this list. I've been using the same photo of myself and here are some of my favorite AI generated photos so far and what prompt I used to get it. that you really like and want to continue working on, you have to try to define what kind of keywords is missing here. And once you've defined it, try one more time. See what you get now and try to work from there. I think this is how everyone works with AI and you just have to try and fail. And sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes you get really happy because you feel like you finally get it and then boom you are suddenly the opposite gender. <laughs> like, how? <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, at least. <laughs> so if you found this intriguing, I have linked some resources in the description box so it is easy for you to get started. That's it. Oh, yeah, they just said bye, so. Okay, <laughs> see you next video. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Bye.